Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In my previous video, we have built a sleek, responsive admin dashboard using React and Tailwind CSS. But what is a dashboard without a compelling charts, right? Today, we are diving deeper into data visualization uh, by comparing three powerful charting libraries, D3.js, Chart.js, and Apex Charts. We will explore their strengths and why you might pick one over another. By the end, you will know exactly how to pick the proper charting library for your next project. Project. Let's get started. Okay, so we are getting back to admin dashboard, uh, which I have built with uh, React and Tailwind CSS. And if you want to know how exactly I have built it, uh, you can watch my previous video on my channel. Uh, there I explain how exactly I've built that dashboard and uh, I gave also explanation to the classes I have used uh, to build the components. But in today's video, we are focusing on data visualization exactly on that Part. As you see, I have already added the charts, uh, one from D3.js, one from Chart.js and Apex charts. And by the way, Apex charts I have already used in my previous video, but today we're gonna dive in and check how exactly it works and what kind of data it, it, it requires uh, so to be able to render uh, such a chart. So we'll start uh, exploring these charts one by one. And uh, I think the first one we will pick is gonna be Apex line chart since we already use it in uh, uh, implementation of the dashboard. Then we will uh, take a look at the chart.js and in the end, uh, we're gonna take a look at D3 uh, JS chart, uh, that's going to be the most complex one and the most interesting. So we will end up with the D3.js chart. So, but to be able to work with these charts, uh, we need first to install uh, required uh, dependencies. In your terminal, you need to run this command and install D3, chart.js, react chart.js2, apex charts and react apex charts. That's it. Also, I have created a file with data, which we're going to use for D3 and Chart.js charts. Now let's go to Apex line chart and go through the code. In the beginning of that component, uh, we have defined uh, data, uh, which we want to render. Uh, it will have title sales and also here you can see a list of values. But uh, the most important thing here is this configuration object. So let's go through it. And as a first thing, we need to define what kind of chart we want to render. And here in type, we say that we want line chart. Then we specify height and we say that we don't want to show toolbar. After that, we have configuration of the stroke. So we want a smooth line, not the sharp one. So we want it to go smooth over the values over the time. So also here we specify width. And third one is markers. So markers is going to be placed in the point where X and Y uh, axis values intersect. Uh, so here we specify radius size of these markers and color and stroke colors of the markers. It is here. Also, in the end, we specify the width of the stroke. And here we configure X axis. So here we specify categories, which is going to be days and days is going to be mapped to this values, what we have in our series. So it means that on Monday we would have 1000, uh, 3000 we will have on Tuesday and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, etc. Then we have colors. Colors is just uh, global colors of the chart. And uh, after the colors, uh, we have configuration of uh, responsiveness. Here we specify breakpoint on 668 pixels. And then we just uh, specify also sizes for chart markers and stroke. And in the end, uh, we set the theme for the tooltip is going to be light. So basically that's it for configuration. After that, we need to import a chart component uh, from a React Apex chart library. And here we need to pass that options, series, and again, we need to specify type, height, and also width of this component. Basically, that's it. So let's take a look um, in browser. How does it look? Let's comment out uh, these two charts and let's take a look just on Apex line chart. Okay, here is it. So as you see on the left, uh, here are our values. So what we set from 1000 to 7000 and here are the days. And at the moment where these values intersect, we have that uh, markers. Uh, so basically that's it. You see that uh, this uh, chart is pretty interactive. 
And also without any extra configuration, we have a brush on that uh, timeline so we can zoom in in a specific uh, time period. So from Wednesday to Thursday, it's pretty cool. And actually we didn't uh, do any extra setup for that. Also one more thing, let's for example, enable toolbar. And as you see, after we enable toolbar, we get additional action buttons uh, for the chart. Uh, one of them, for example, it's export of this chart to different formats and also zoom uh, buttons, which is pretty cool. Let's take a look now at uh, chart.js line chart component. And as you see, configuration here looks much more simple than an Apex chart. So, but before we dive into configuration, let's take a look at that part, chart register. So here we need to explicitly import and register components, what we need for our chart. And one of them we will need category scale for labeling X axis. Also we will need a linear scale for labeling Y axis with the numeric values. Also we will need point element to put that markers and line element to draw the line. And besides, we will need uh, title, tooltip and legend. Okay, now let's dive in into configuration. So here we specify labels, we take them from chart data and then data set goes. So here we will have label sales and data we're gonna use from chart data values. And then we just define color of the line. And also here we define smoothness of this line and width. And this fill we specify to false, so we don't need any color under the line. That's what this means. Then we need to import this line component from the library and pass uh, data configuration to data prop. And also additionally in options, we tell that we want it to be responsive and we don't want to maintain aspect ratio. That's it. And also we need to wrap this component in another div and uh, give it a width of 100% and height 300 pixels. Basically that's it for setup. Let's go to browser and see how it looks. So we need to comment out Apex and bring chart GS. Here is the chart, as you see, here is the labels we specify, X and Y axis looks okay, the same as uh, in uh, Apex chart. Also we have that uh, markers with the tooltips, but here we don't have that interactivity what we had in Apex chart, so we don't have that brush, but only we can click on that legend and if we click it, so all the cells would be deselected. So if you have multiple values, so you just can toggle them and uh, compare one by one. And now is turn of D3GS line chart component. As you see, setup here looks a bit more complex than in previous charts. So let's go line by line. First, uh, we declare interface uh, with the data type we are gonna work with. And after that, uh, our D3 chart component goes. Inside uh, that component, uh, the first what we do, we create in use ref hook and create in reference to the div where we gonna render our chart. And the next step, uh, we implement use effect, which is gonna render on the component mount and run all main logic to uh, render the chart. Inside use effect, uh, we check uh, if reference already exists. So if it exists, we proceed uh, further. In that part, we specify the dimensions of the chart. So here we get the width of the parent div, then we assign some height and also margins on the top right, bottom and left. And then based on this margins, also we calculate width of our chart and that width then we gonna use a bit later. After that, we format in the data. So we use here time parse method from D3. And here actually we format in the data, the one we received from uh, chart data from here. And this is a very important uh, part. Uh, we do clean up on each render just to avoid uh, chart duplicates. 
In that part, we create in the main SVG uh, group. Uh, so for that, we use uh, D3 method select. So we select in the D where we render in the chart. Then we append in their SVG. We specify width and height. And inside that SVG, we append group. And then we shift a bit uh, the positioning of it uh, using translate and using our margin left and margin top. Here we create an X a time scale. So for that, we need to use scale time method from D3. Here we set the input value from minimum to maximum date. And here we map uh, time values to pixels positions. For Y scale, we do pretty similar thing, uh, but there we place uh, prices labels and here we use scale linear. After X scale and Y scale is ready, so then we can uh, define the line. So for that, we use D3 line method and then we mapping date and price on our X and Y scale accordingly. And also here we specify the type of the line. So here is going to be curve monotone X. So it's going to be smooth line, but there are other methods which can make this line uh, more sharp, for example. And here we are drawing um, X scale and Y scale. Uh, so for the X scale, we a bit adjusting it positioning using transform uh, translate. And here we use a margin top and margin bottom. And here also we format in the ticks just to properly format and show uh, month names. And then we draw Y scale. And in the final part, uh, we need to draw the line itself and we need to draw these markers, uh, which is going to be small circles. So let's start with a line. So here we append to our SVG path. Then we specify which data we're going to use for that uh, path. Then there is some styling. Uh, so the fill uh, is going to be none. Uh, so we specify color of that path and then the width. And here we use the tree line generator to define that path for the line. And for the markers, we use select all, all circles. Uh, we use the same data and we need to append circle on each uh, data point. Here we specify how we gonna position the circles on the Y and X scales. And in that part is just the styling part. Here we specify the radius of the circles and the color. So basically that's it for setup. So you see there are a lot of things for actually very basic uh, chart. So let's uh, go to browser and see how it looks. And here is it. As you see, chart looks uh, more simple uh, than uh, previous charts. So it doesn't have any interactivity. So if you, we want to add some in interactivity to the chart, so we need to code more things, uh, draw more things here. But uh, yeah, the basic requirement is achieved. So we have X and Y uh, axis, which represents price and months, and we have a smooth line with the markers. That's it. So now let's compare three of them and see how they look uh, side by side. And also I will show you another interesting thing. Now we can see and compare them all together. I just need uh, to fix that uh, title quickly. So if you compare effort and output, we can definitely say that Chart.js and Apex did a better job because we just uh, added a few lines of code and we have uh, pretty nice charts, uh, which are interactive as well. So you can uh, do some actions with these lines, uh, markers and stuff. And uh, regarding the D3.js, it's just a plain static uh, line chart without any even animations or hover effects, etc. And moreover, if we try to check responsiveness here, so let's move that window here. So you see that these charts are adjusting to the screen size, but D3 line chart uh, doesn't. So to make it responsive, we need to again add more code and uh, adjust the chart itself. And another interesting thing I want to share is if we take a look here, uh, the way these charts are uh, rendered. So let's inspect, for example, D3.js. 
So as you see, this is our div, the wrapper, and here is the SVG what we have created. So inside that SVG, we have that groups, uh, the one we configured before. So and actually we can clearly see what exactly is uh, uh, rendered and created in DOM for that chart. But if we take a look at others, uh, chart.js and apex uh, line chart so they use canvas so d3 renders on svg and this two renders on canvas so we we cannot see what is inside and how it is rendered so this is just canvas component there are charting libraries like eCharts they provide you option to render an svg or canvas so what is the main difference between canvas and svg just to be brief Canvas provides a better performance and SVG provides better uh, control over DOM manipulations. So in case if you work with uh, large data sets, I would definitely suggest to use Canvas uh, rendering for the chart. And wrapping up, uh, which uh, library to choose for your next project? If you need quick and simple solution, I would suggest definitely to use Chart.js or uh, Apex Charts. Because as you saw, setup there is pretty simple. You don't need to code a lot. You just provide configuration and that's it. Your chart is ready. It's pretty interactive and uh, good looking. But if you're working on custom data visualization and you want a lot of custom things, uh, custom animations and also custom events uh, in your chart, then D3.js is the one to pick. For my opinion, D3.js is very powerful a library. You can achieve a lot of cool stuff with that. Uh, you can build a lot of custom things. But one of the minuses is learning curve because you need to spend more time learning and understanding how to build such cool and interactive uh, charts with D3.js. Let me show you some examples. Uh, this is a D3.js uh, website and uh, there are some examples of uh, different data visualizations implemented uh, with uh, D3.js. Let's take a look at that. As you see, this chart is more interactive. You can change uh, the way data looks uh, using the slider, but to be able to implement that, you need to add additional logic. And in this example, you actually can take a look how it is implemented. So it's good to go to that website and just browse uh, through different examples uh, just to get that basic understanding uh, what you can achieve with uh, D3.js. And let's take a look at the example of Chart.js uh, uh, website. So, so as I said, if you want quickly implement some chart uh, without spending a lot of time on coding, let's take a look at that vertical bar chart. So you see that setup is also is pretty simple. So you can do that even copy pasting it from here and just uh, adding your own data set. And in Apex Charts is pretty much the same. So let's go to Apex Charts uh, demos and let's select uh, columns, charts. And here you have bigger variety of charts. So let's select this one. And as you see, setup is pretty much similar to the one we did. So you also actually can copy paste it from here and use your own data set and your chart is ready and ready to be integrated into your dashboard. And that's it for today. Today we explored how to integrate uh, D3.js, uh, Apex Chart and Chart.js uh, charts into a dashboard. So just to summarize, uh, you can use D3.js in case if you want to create your custom data visualization. Otherwise, uh, Apex Charts and Chart.js uh, will be very helpful in case if you want quickly integrate charts into your app. Apex Charts uh, provides uh, more control uh, to your responsiveness and uh, the way you build your chart. Chart.js is much more simple and also it's much more simple to integrate it to your app. If you found this video tutorial helpful, please like, comment and subscribe to the channel for more dev insights. See you in the next one.